Hi, welcome to my channel, my name is Hugo, and today we're going to see what's the best sock for this week. We're going to see also how much I lost on Naked, and I'm also going to do an analysis on the survey that I posted during this week regarding the MEM stocks. So, stay around. Just one more thing before we go back to the video is, if you're not yet subscribed, please subscribe. I only have 2.6% of my viewers are subscribers, so don't forget to hit the subscribe button. This is going to help me to reach the 1000 subscribers. Since I don't win anything with this, so please help me with that. Thank you. And now let's go back to the video. So we're going to start the week with energy sector, which in this case it's ENB and Bridge Inc. They have a dividend yield of 7.42%. They pay quarterly in February, May, August, in November, and they are undervalued in 26.6%. The ex-dividend date is going to be on February 11th, and the financial health is 1G only because they have a slight difference between assets and liabilities, which is going to be 1 billion of a difference between assets and liabilities. The market sentiment is old, and as we can see on the graph, it's been increasing uh, in the past few months, but we still undervalued in 26%, so it could be a good buy. Bear in mind, uh, two weeks ago, I mentioned two really good stocks on the energy sectors, so don't forget to check them on my playlists. They were with a higher dividend yield than this one and if my memory doesn't trick me i think had a better financial health than uh, this one so this is something that we need to play around of course if you're going to buy those two you're not going to receive the dividends for that quarter because the ex-dividend that already passed so you didn't have time to get in on those two you can get on this one anyway it's something that we need to play with the ticker xom exomobile it's also on the energy sector they have a dividend yield of 7.2% and they pay quarterly February, May, August and November. Actually, all the stocks that I mentioned today, they pay always at the same months, but with different days. So the payment is going to be the same for all of them. They are overvalued in 14.6% because they mentioned in the news that they could do a merge with the CVX, which also one of the tickers that I have on my portfolio. And the X dividend date is the 9th of February. I don't know if we're going to have uh, time to buy this one because we need two days to buy uh, in order to in order to process the, the request. The financial health is a G and the market sentiment is a old. For ExxonMobile, well, probably I could go for one of the stocks that I've mentioned before because at the moment they are quite high of speculation due to this news and also they have decreased the number of employees doing some redundancy. Uh, and this has increased the profits on the stock and making more people look into it. Uh, so I could hold a little bit. I don't know if I'll go for, for Exxon at the moment. Probably I'll go for a XVX uh, instead of uh, Exxon. But it's something that you need to look into it. VLO, Valero Energy Corp. It's also one of the energy sectors. This also is a refinery on gas and they also do marketing. It's a dividend yield of 6.42%. They also pay quarterly and the same months than the others. They are undervalued in 18.9% and the ex-dividend date is on the 10th of February. The, the financial health is 2Gs, means they have a lot of assets comparing to the liabilities and this is quite good in terms of financial health. The market sentiment is old as well. They've been increasing in the past months. Uh, but we still have uh, undervalued of 18%, so we still have some margin here of growth on this stock. PRO Prudence Financing, it's a stock on insurance sector, and they deal with life and health insurance. They have a dividend yield of 5.48%. They also pay quarterly, and they are undervalued in 48.8%, which is quite good. So, And the ex-dividend date is on the 9th of February. And the financial health is quite good as well, with a lot of assets comparing to the liabilities and the market sentiment it's a buy and as we can see as well we have a, a not a all times low but it's quite low from the past months so it's a quite good to to buy right now and we still have a dividend yield of five percent that's going to increase uh, our portfolio ibm international business machines corporation have a dividend yield of 9.39 percent they also pay quarterly they are undervalued in 24 percent is quite good at the moment uh, beside the fact that they've been increasing in the past months and the ex dividend date is in the 9th of February. The financial health is 2Gs. They are quite stable financially. 
and the market sentiments on old. Bear in mind that IBM no longer sells computers. They only work on the IT consultancy and also other services, which means the cloud service that they also provide as Microsoft Azure or AWS. They don't hold so, uh, a big chunk of share in the terms of markets comparing with AWS or Microsoft Azure, but they also provide uh, cloud services. And this is one of the biggest revenues uh, streams that they have at the moment besides the IT consultancy. Cyber Healthcare, it's a REITs. This is one of the stocks that we should have on our portfolio. Of course, there are others in the market that I have already mentioned on my previous videos. This one has a dividend yield of a 6.71%, pays also quarterly. It's under value on 56.8, which is quite good. Beside the fact it's been increased on the past months, it's still 56% below the fair value. We have a lot of margin here to grow. And the ex dividend data, it's on the 11th of February. And the financial health, it's quite good with two Gs. And the market sentiment is old. Bear in mind, this is a REIT stock and deals on the health and care sector, which I have also uh, in my portfolio, which is uh, MPW. And I do believe have a smaller dividend yield than this one. So probably I'm thinking that I could change that one for this because of the dividend yield. But again, uh, it's something that I need to, to look into it. So and now let's see how you can lose 60% of your investments. Uh, which was the case that uh, happened to me on Naked. So everybody was talking about the Wall Street bets and I thought, why not? Let's jump into the bandwagon and see what happens. Fortunately, I didn't invest too much. I only invest 0.6% of my entire portfolio, which was nothing and uh, which I will recover later on with the sale of uh, uh, Philip Morris, which have a 50% of increase and I recover my loss entirely. I did have a loss of in 60%, which was quite high. And what happened here was when I got in, in the party, the party was already finished. I didn't thought that all the things that happened to Robin Wood and Itoro blocking the stocks could happen. And this was a big question mark that nobody knew what could happen. And unfortunately, the stock went down quite fast. So I couldn't close my order on time. So I could uh, lose less than uh, 60%. Anyway, this was a really bad investment. I do recommend you guys, if you are investing for the first time, there's a few things that you should know before you invest and where you're investing, what you should do and not do. I've posted a few things on Twitter and on the Discord as well. If you don't know the, those links, the link are on the description. And uh, be advised and know where you're going to invest so to avoid this kind of loss as I did. Fortunately, I recovered really fast with the sale of uh, Philip Morris, but I know there are some people that lost, uh, lost a lot, and we're going to see this on the analysis that I'm going to do right now. So the MEMS stock survey, I'm going to leave the, the link on the descriptions if you guys want to fill, and probably if I do have a lot of information there, then I can do another video on this. But this is going to be an analysis that I've done on the survey that I published on my uh, Twitter account, and also on the Wall Street bets and on eToro, which I wanted to know what was the type of investors that we were dealing that were investing on uh, GameStock and other stocks like Nokia, Naked, etc. One of the first questions I wanted to know what was the investment experience that the people have when investing. So we can see that the majority of the people didn't know or didn't have any investment experience. And this is could be quite risky and losing money if you don't have any experience. So I really recommend you to at least follow someone who knows or copy using eToro platform or do your own analysis. We, as you can see, 14% had some kind of idea or some kind of experience how to invest. And the majority didn't have any kind of experience and this is quite uh, alarming. I'm still glad with this results because 92% of the people know uh, what was the risk and only 7% of the people didn't know what was the risk if they could lose uh, all the money. This is quite important and probably we're going to see further on on the analysis that we had people losing uh, the entire investments that they've done. Let's check this. What was the source of the income was also one of the uh, questions that I've put up there, which most of the people was money that came from savings. This gives us at least a view where the money came from and uh, how much the, the people has uh, lost 
on those savings or maybe win but um, the most of it comes for savings as myself comes from wage and savings as well i do intend to uh, control those savings because those savings are going to be a source of future investments or even to my for my pension uh, from other stocks so this 30 percent what this told us was as i've talked before in my previous video there was a big shift from facebook's and big companies into this stock so that's why we can see here that at least 30 percent of them of the people uh, have made this shift and this has reduced a lot the other stocks which i've i've invested on facebook and twitter etc and uh, other stocks and apple as well so uh, i didn't follow quite well the trends of the people investing in this uh, kind of stocks on the mem stocks i went to the exactly opposite uh, which was investing on coca-cola and other stocks where the money from those stocks were coming from as you can see here how much the people invested the majority this actually makes me uh, a bit happy because people weren't crazy and in investing uh, more than one thousand dollars or at least we have a few people here as you can see uh, has invested uh, one or two guys invested more than one thousand um, dollars but the majority invested uh, below 100 or between 100 and 1000 most of the people invested on the gm which on the past thursday or friday it went down quite a lot so i'm afraid these people probably has lost their money but we're going to see this on the next chart so here you can see how much the people won and lost we can see here on the top chart is the loss and then the below is the win Mo a lot of people win around 0 to 10 percent on a G, uh, GME on the GameStop but the majority of the people didn't want any kind of money they actually lost uh, uh, a lot of money between the 0 and 10 percent and 10 percent to 25 percent has lost their money between those values not much people won more than 10 percent on the stock and to, to be fair with you I've won 15% on the Philip Morris on Friday, which was much more than these people has ever won on this uh, kind of stock. So this is the type of analysis that we need to know. We need to be careful when you're trying to follow a trend and we need to do some analysis. Uh, for example, one of the things that I've done wrong was I didn't investigate naked. I don't even know that was a, a company based on uh, the fashion and I, I didn't done any analysis on the health or what is the the company so that's why i've sold immediately as soon as i've done some analysis on the financial health and how the company was performing so as you can see i've done exactly the opposite that i should done i done the first then i should be doing the first analysis and then invest on it and I hope this information will help you guys to learn and to do your own analysis. Bear in mind one thing, because when I've posted this, this was uh, on the Monday and Thursday. So there was uh, still of a big hype and people trying to invest. But we can see that majority of the people try to f uh, not to invest so much on the GME and AMC. They try to invest on other stocks because they could try to see the decline of those stocks but still there was some people investing in these stocks and i hope they didn't lose so much on the next few days so now let's see the performance of my portfolio this week the market has increased in 5.5 percent my portfolio was 3.3 percent because of the big cut that i had with naked and the other short that i've done on bby which uh, didn't allow me to follow the market as we was supposed to but although I did had a big recovery and my portfolio this week has increased in 21.18% and since inception it's now at 9.17% which last week was 5%. So we have a 2 point increase just this week. The, the stocks, the top 5 stocks this week was uh, Twitter with a 12% increase. International Consolidated Airlines which so this was an investment that I've done 2 weeks ago. We, we had a 10% increase. One of the ETFs, XLE, in, in the energy sector had an increase of 82.2%. Uh, energy transfer, which is one of the highest dividend payers, has an increase of 7.2%. And Principal Financial Group, which is also one of the top payers dividend yield, 
have a, a 6.8 percent of, of increase so now let's see what was the new acquisitions that i've done during this week let's look into my spreadsheets i just want to remember that you can also download the spreadsheets it's on the description and you can follow if you want to copy and you can use that spreadsheet as a simulator so what you can see here is my spreadsheet it's also updated i updated on the friday which i do always uh, and so you can follow the the copy trades as close as you can as mine when we invest with the 500 dollars you're going to receive at the end of the year 26 dollars uh, which is going to be roughly 5.3 percent of the entire investment that you've done which is quite good much above the the average so the investments that i've done this week was a, a pfe which is pfizer pfizer at um, all-time lows this week and taking in consideration the news about the vaccine the the rollout of the vaccine in uh, uk and the united states which is not yet uh, running uh, I do believe this is going to have a big increase in the next uh, few weeks or months. So that's why uh, I've used the all-time lows on Pfizer to buy right now. With that, also, I wanted to have some um, exposure to gold, which I didn't have so far. And I went to LGDM, which is a bit different uh, from LGB. Both are two ETFs. But the big difference between those two stocks are the cost they have on acquisition and also the the way they uh, do the calculation for the gold and one it's in ounces and the other one it's a bit lower than ounces i don't know what is <laughs> below ounces i use a metric system i don't use the imperial system so i don't know but uh, it's an ounces and the other one it's different and that's why the biggest difference on the price of the share so and this was the biggest acquisitions that i had uh, this week once again, I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. That is going to help me. Don't forget to hit the like and the bell to receive upcoming videos. And if you want to comment, please leave a comment there. You also can follow me on Twitter or in Discord. The link are on the description. So see you next week and cheers.